Good morning from Copenhagen Airport. I'm flying to a quiet special destination today. I'm on my way to Greenland and I already checked in for my Air Greenland flights to Kongerlusok and to Nuuk. And if you come to these white self backdrop machines at Copenhagen Airport, you can change your seats and even print out the boarding passes for your flights. So I just changed my seat to a window one on the A330neo and you can even change it on the domestic flights, so the Dash 200s, uh, so the flights within Greenland. I will be flying from Kangerlusuaku to Nuuk and I just got a window seat there in the first row. I, I think that's the best one there. And yes, and you can print out the boarding buses. But if you have a checked in luggage, the self backdrop is not working for Air Greenland. You have to go to the normal check in for that, which is in Terminal 2. So I'm heading over to Terminal 2, where the Air Greenland check in counters are. And even the cheapest fare of Air Greenland includes one free drop of baggage. So they are prepared for the cap city, they, open, they usually open like six counters. And I assume most of the passengers traveling to Greenland will drop off a larger bag. This will be our plane to Greenland, it's called Tukaku and it's the only wide body aircraft in Air Greenland's fleet and it's still considered as a brand new plane at the time of this video and they operate this aircraft every day once between Kanger Luzwak and Copenhagen so the aircraft is flying the same route in the 95% of its lifespan and they are using this aircraft to transport all the urgent and important cargo to Greenland so, for example, if you post a letter to Greenland, it will surely fly on this aircraft once. But of course, due to the cargo capacity limits of this A330, uh, shipping freight to Greenland with this plane must be way more expensive than shipping it by ships. Before allowing us on the plane, they briefly checked our passports, as it's mandatory to have a passport with you when you travel to Greenland. And it's such a unique experience boarding this plane, as this is the only pathway from the European mainland to Greenland. I will show you the business class later in this video, which is more like a Hello. premium economy due to its 232 configuration. But the economy is in 242 configuration, as you can see here. My seat for the next 4 hours will be 15k. I expect a nice engine view seat. Let's check it. It's pretty good. It's, that's gonna do it for the next four hours. And if we go further back in this economy class section, let's check route 27. It's 27k here. We got a wing view. It's pretty good. And the whole, all the seats are equipped with modern IFE screens. And the whole impression of the cabin is very blue. But it looks fresh and clean, so I like it. At least this is way better than the previous Air Greenland aircraft, which was like a 27 years old normal A330, where the quality of the seats was so crap, the quality of the cabin was so bad, it was aged, it was very old. I haven't experienced it, but I saw it from other trip reporters videos, and it was really crap from what I saw. So comparing the older Air Greenland to this new one, it's a great upgrade. There's a, a great selection of movies and musics and entertainment and games uploaded in this IFA system, but make sure to bring an own earplug with you because Air Greenland won't give you a free earplug, so they will charge you for it to connect to the sound of this IFE. So it's better to think ahead and bring an earplug with you. We have two different camera views, one on the front gear, actually two on the front gear and one looks uh, straight and one looks down. Good morning and welcome aboard the Air Greenland Airbus 330neo. 
the flight time to the master shop is estimated to be 4 hours and 20 minutes. We will now demonstrate the safety features and it's time to select flight mode on electronic devices. Please remove headsets in order to pay attention to the demonstration. Should you have any questions, you are welcome to contact the cabin crew. By the way, if you have flown with this airline before or with this aircraft, I'm very curious to read your experiences. So feel free to share your Air Greenland experiences in the comment section. So let's see the entertainment offered by Air Greenland for this 4 hours flight. We got a Shuluk magazine here, which is the main magazine for Air Greenland. Here we have the Air Greenland A33800 Neo safety card, which is very low quality. It's really like a thin piece of paper. And we have Wi-Fi on board, Tukaku Wi-Fi. The price is 49 Danish Kron or 6 US dollars for the whole duration of the flight but it's also displayed in front of you on the screen that you can connect. So if it's very necessary and you want to work, want to check your emails, it's worth to know that you have the possibility to connect to the onboard Wi-Fi for 6 US dollars. And we have like an adventure magazine here, what to explore in Greenland. And what else do we have here? Yes, we have an onboard shopping magazine. Timi Sitta Kupissi said, Greenlandic language is so hard, but you can uh, buy this uh, aircraft model, like um, headrest. And yeah, we have so many things here for sale. An interesting thing what I noticed during the flight is that Greenlandic people kept buying tobacco products. I don't know it's because of the tax or it's uh, cheaper buying on board without tax than in Greenland. Uh, anyways, you will see it later in this video. IFV screen of Air Greenland got some very cool functions. You can look through all the villages and cities of Greenland. You can plan your trip, look, and look through the whole flight map and flight operation of Air Greenland. So yeah, it has some nice features. Shortly after takeoff from Copenhagen, the crew came with the first drink service, which consisted of two different drink options. I went for an apple juice and everyone received some crackers. This is the business class section, which is more like a premium economy, but Air Greenland sells this as a business class. But it's 2-3-2 two, two configuration is not very convincing as a business class so it's more like a premium economy for me if i would travel on on that class like one and a half hour into the flight the crew started the breakfast service which was very slow we received a meal box with two different kind of breads a warm one and the cold one and if we open this we have some cinnamon rolls inside which is typical danish food and the main meal consisted of tomatoes, an egg, ham, cheese, salad and some kind of fish like tuna or something. And we also received coffee or tea. It was an additional drink option next to the main meal. And that's it for this four hours flight to Greenland. After everyone ate their meal, the crew didn't really want to collect the rubbish. So this uh, small box was rotting here on my tray, tray table for the next one and a half hour. But at least they came to offer tea or coffee 
for another round and there were like four rounds of coffee and tea so it's appreciated Tobacco is a so precious shopping product on board this flight that the crew is hiding it on their crew seats. What was super weird is that the onboard duty free selling lasted for like more than one hour because every third row in the fly deck kept buying tobacco. They sold like I don't know 60, 70 packs of tobacco just on board this flight. Crazy. I've never been on a flight selling this amount of tobacco. At this point we are already flying over the large ice cap of Greenland. We are starting our approach to Kangerluzwak in 28 minutes. And if we look outside we can see the beautiful wide ice cap. The airport base and village of Kongerluswak is located 25 kilometers away from the nearest ice cap, which is making it the closest available city to the ice cap in Greenland. And for this reason, most of the visitors transiting through Kongerluswak will probably go on a hike trip to, to the ice cap. And imagine when you plan a trip to Greenland, you will probably want to go to well-known cities like Nuuk, Sisimut or Ilulissat. But who would ever think of visiting Kongerluswak? No, no one cares about this place and many passengers are willing to pay hundreds of dollars more to have a shorter one or two hour layover in Kongerluswak. But if you plan to visit Greenland on budget, you will most likely have to spend a day in this village. Because Air Greenland pricing strategy is the following. You need to know that Kongerluswak is the only airport in Greenland where a wide body plane is able to land. So the airline collects all the passengers here every day who are arriving to Greenland and people can reach all the other cities of Greenland from here by a smaller aircraft. So as soon as the around 300 people lands from Copenhagen, which is the only uh, one and only flight every day to the island, like 70% of the passengers will want to reach the capital city Nuuk. The other 30% will most likely go to Ilulissat, Asiat, Kuarnaku or Sisimut. And Air Greenland operates like 6 flights between Kangerluswak and Nuuk daily, each carrying maximum of 27 people. But they can't get like 200 people to Nuuk in one afternoon after the Copenhagen flight has landed. So they sell cheaper tickets with night layover in Kongerluswak and those passengers can get to Nuuk the next day. Just an interesting fact that Conger Luswak Airport was built during the US occupation back in the 1950s and the US Air Force is still using this as a base due to its unique location between Europe and North America. And this was on the only flat plane area in the whole region where they could build a 13,000 feet or 4 kilometers long runway for the wide body jets and for the cargo planes as well. The Air Greenland crew is already waiting for us as they have to prepare the flight back to Copenhagen as this aircraft is sleeping at Copenhagen airport every day uh, and as I mentioned before this is the one and only connection between mainland Europe and Greenland every day so it's quite a unique flight. 
I purchased the ticket for 412 euros round trip, 44 flight segments from Copenhagen to Nuuk and from Nuuk back to Copenhagen with a 1-1 night layover in Kangerlussuaq. But if I wanted to avoid a night transfer in this airport village, I would have to pay 690 euros round trip. And it's, it's for the same four flights, just without a night transfer here in Kangerlussuaq. Once you arrive from Copenhagen, you need to go up to the international transit area where they check your passport. Anyways, I don't remember they checked it briefly, they just took a look at it. And then you find yourself in a very small transit area with a duty free shop. And if you go upstairs, there's like a rest area. And this is the international departure hall as well. So this is after the security control. And there's only one boarding gate, which is always used for Copenhagen in, in most of the cases. And once you go through this door, you are in the domestic departure and arrival hall. If you fly domestic in Greenland, you don't need to go through security checks. You arrive at the check-in, drop off your bag and just walk to the plane through gate number one which is right there. And this is the check-in area. This is the only security control here with two lines. And yeah, that's it. This is Kangir Lusuak International Airport. And if you have a domestic flight, you, you just go uh, down the stairs here. You just go to the right direction and the gate agents will guide you to the plane. And that's it. And this is the baggage reclaim area with only one baggage belt. So all the bags are arriving here. It's, it's very small. The layout is making this airport super weird. Like from the baggage reclaim you can just access the, the domestic uh, departure, the arrival and the check-in zone at once by just coming up these stairs and no one checks anything. You don't have to go through doors, nothing. It's just one tiny area. So cute. Well, thank you so much for coming along with me in this trip report to Greenland. I really hope you enjoyed it and it was uh, useful in some ways. In the upcoming videos I will show you what it's like flying domestic in Greenland with these tiny Bombardier Dash 200s. And I can already tell you I have some very exciting and unique flight experiences coming up. So if you don't want to miss them, please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. You can leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. And thank you so much for joining. Have a nice day and bye bye.